What's up guys, the Panthers here and welcome to my team of the year preparation slash market crash advice video. Um, today I'm going to take you through what you can do to prepare for team of the year which is in just over one week now. Um, well, probably, like we don't know for sure but the, the gala is on the 11th. Uh, according to the last few years, EA will release the defenders the same day they are announced. So the 11th, Monday the 11th around 7, 8, 9 p.m. We should have the blue defenders in packs. Um, by Wednesday at 6 p.m. we'll have the midfielders in the packs. And Friday at 6 p.m. we'll have the attackers in packs. Until Saturday at 6 p.m. when we will have the entire team in packs for around 36 to 48 hours. Um, there's been a lot of speculation about who's in team of the year, who's not in team of the year. Um, whether there'll be subs and re reserves. Let me explain to you a little bit how the team of the year works. Um, the team of the year is run by FIFA, not by EA. It has no bearing on EA at all. It doesn't literally doesn't make any difference to EA what it is or what it isn't. The formation is 4-3-3 and players get picked in certain categories of attack, midfield, defence or goalkeeper. So for example, we know for a fact that Neymar, Messi and Ronaldo are the three front runners for Ballon d'Or. They are going to be first, second and third, which means they are guaranteed to be in team of the year. With that in mind, you've got to then consider where they're going to be in Team of the Year. In the Team of the Year voting polls, they are all considered as attackers. So in this year's 4-3-3 formation, we know that our three attackers are going to be Ronaldo, Messi and Neymar. Um, there most likely will be a 98 or 99 left-wing Ronaldo, a 97 left-wing Neymar and a 90. 8 or 99 right wing Messi, the winner of the Ballon d'Or could possibly get a 99 card. If it's Messi, probably will. If it's Ronaldo, might not. If it's Neymar, again, I don't know. It's an interesting one because if Neymar wins the Ballon d'Or, which who's my f I want Neymar to win the Ballon d'Or, I think he deserves it. Um, Ronaldo already has a 96 card. So Ronaldo's team of the year has to be at least a 98, if not a 99. Um, to allow for his team of the season and any you know any projected informs or um, man of the matches or hero cards that Ronaldo may get, meaning that Neymar could get a 99 um, in that instance if he wins it. So we don't know who how, you know what the ratings are going to be, but we know Messi, Ronaldo, and Neymar are going to get the three attacking spots, which leaves the three midfield spots, the four defender spots, and the goalkeeper spots. Now, whilst we don't know who those are, it's not guaranteed to be a left back, two centre backs, and a right back. If you remember back to last year, we had three centre backs and a right back. You know, it literally just depends on who is voted into the team of the year. There are three team of the years. There's an A team, which is a team that gets announced on TV live. There's a B team, which you don't see announced, and a C team that you don't see announced. Luis Suarez, who probably won't be in the A team, um, probably will be in the B team, probably won't be in EA's team of the year. Because EA only do the first 11, because there's no bench, what will be interesting to see is if EA offer a second team as well and release the two teams. Maybe they'll release the B team this year. They haven't ever done it before, but they've done a lot of things this year that they've never done before. So we're hoping that we might get more team of the year players this year than ever before, but I wouldn't put my money on it. I wouldn't bet on it. I would bet on it being just the standard 11 players that win the, the team of the year, and uh, that will be who we've got. So with that in mind, um, how do you prepare for Team of the Year? There's a few ways you can prepare for Team of the Year. The first thing you can do is just sell everything. As you can see on my account, I've got 16 million coins because I have sold everything. Those of you that watch my stream regularly, you would have known that I had um, I, would, I had over a thousand players in my club. I have sold or discarded everything except my bronze low rateds for the bench, uh, the team that I'm using, and a couple of substitutes. I'll show you the squad that I'm using. I'm actually going to make a video on this squad as well um, tomorrow. So watch out for that for the gameplay. This is a squad that I'm using. I've got a couple of subs there in Lacazette and Teixeira. I've got Adjuries and Hesse here who there's no point trying to sell or discard because they go for discard value. And this is a team that I'm playing with. I was playing with a much cheaper team. I wanted to play. I, like, I, I enjoyed Neymar so much. And, and you know, like these players, they're not really worth crazy amounts. 27,000, 20,000. When I've got 16 million coins, that's not too bad. If you've only got a hundred thousand coins or a few hundred thousand coins or a million coins, I would say don't bother buying these players. Use a cheap team. On my channel, there's a 10k team that is amazing. There's a 25k team that's very good and a 50k team that's also very good. So if you want to fit into one of those budgets, you can go and check those out right now. 
and uh, build your team to play until team of the year. Of course, there's only one week left until the team of the year, one week. So uh, you're not going to be playing with a cheap team for long. You know, it's going to be a short period of time before you can then start to look at buying your players back for much cheaper because of the market crash or, you know, just using those coins to invest in blue cards or open packs to see if you can get lucky for blue cards. So selling everything is important. This video, of course, is going to cause a lot of people to start panic selling. It's going to drive the prices of things down. There's a saying uh, in the FIFA community right now about the crash before the crash, which is very true. The, the crash happens in the panic and lead up, up to when the crash is predicted to happen. So Team of the Year comes out Monday. People will predict the crash to be kind of like Saturday, Sunday, Monday, maybe through Tuesday and Wednesday. Um, but because of the way the players are staggered to, to be given out on the midfield defense and attack, the real crash isn't really until like Wednesday for the midfielders. Um, but the crash before the crash is what's important. And that's this week leading up. This is when the players hit their all time low. Um, th this is when like everybody starts panic selling, when the investors start investing in all the players that they want um, because they know that they're going to rise. Like th this is like the optimum moment that if, if you haven't sold your player in the next day, two days, three days, you're going to start seeing them slowly and steadily decline before they rise again during and after team of the year. I'm not a market expert. Let me put that out there. This is all information that I've got through watching people like L-Dog, through reading the forums, through reading the uh, through reading the um, Reddit posts and Reddit threads. And, and everyone is talking about the crash before the crash. Uh, what will happen as well, you'll find, is that quite quickly afterwards, uh, player prices will probably... Uh, like they'll stay stable because what will happen is people will invest in a lot of players. We'll take James Rodriguez for example. Twenty-seven thousand coins I bought him for. Let's say everyone invests in him. Right now he's getting bought up for twenty-seven, twenty-sixes, twenty-fives through the week, twenty-fours, twenty-threes, and twenty-twos. Maybe even down to as low as twenty thousand coins. People are buying these James Rodriguez's because they yes, I'm going to make shit tons of profit on this guy. At the moment where everyone's like, oh, crash is over, sell everything, players are on the rise. An influx of James Rodriguez is going to get pushed back onto the market, forcing his price a little bit lower. Because if everyone list, if everyone bought 100 James Rodriguez's for 22k, and then all of those people listed them up again for 25k, trying to make that little bit of profit, you've now got an abundance of James Rodriguez's on the market for 25k that nobody's going to buy because people are going to be competing and try and get under. So it's very dangerous investing in certain players at this point in time. I would say keep your investments to. Um, potential upgrades for informs only and potential upgrades for um, cards that will go you know go extinct I guess I don't, I don't know if they'll actually go extinct but again like potentially like the Mares, the inform Mares right now I don't think his inform will get upgraded because he's a silver card it, his upgrade won't go that high but his card has gone gone to max price because people are expecting him to be upgraded, which means his inform should get upgraded. When that doesn't get upgraded, people are going to sell him, his price is going to plummet. But he will. there'll be a period of time where there's either very few of him on the market or none of him on the market. Extinct players aren't really a problem this year, which is brilliant. EA have done a good job there. But the bottom line is, get rid of your players now for as much coins as you can. Get an arsenal of coins together. And through the week, be careful on prices through the next seven days. Let's say you want to buy Karen Benzema. I bought Karen Benzema for 20,250 coins yesterday. Let's go and see how much Benzema is going for right now. Uh, he's probably going for a little bit less right now as well. So we've got Karen Benzema. Uh, I bought him for 20,250. He's probably going to be about 18,000, 19,000 right now. If if uh, you know if there is a deduction on his price, maybe he'll still be around 20,000 coins. Maybe I got lucky and bin sniped him. I can't remember. Uh, we'll, we'll list it out for 20,000. There is none on the market. Oh well. I've actually made profit on this Karen Benzema. Maybe maybe late buying is a, is a good thing to do. Jesus, I've actually made mad profit on this Benzema. So there you go. He's at 23,000 right now, this Karen Benzema. Um, although there's not many of him on the market for 23,000. So his price, is, yeah, probably, I probably just sniped him for a bit lower. If you wanted to buy Karen Benzema and you're, like, you've like you got a team and you just love Karen Benzema and you, and you can't afford the 23,000 coins that he goes for right now, watch out for his price throughout this week because it will drop. It will drop down to 20, 18, maybe as low as 16,000 coins through this week. That's when you'll be able to buy him for your minimum price. So get a list of players, get a price list of players that you wanna buy. Let's say you've got a dream team that you wanna to put together for when team of the year is out for players to buy. Start looking for those players this week for getting your deals because right now I'm saying to you guys, sell up. So if 100 people have got Benzema and they wanna sell up, 
and his minimum price is 23,000 and all hundred of those list him. Some of them are gonna list him lower to get rid of him instantly for a better price and uh, you'll be able to bargain by picking up that Benzema. So it's a fine balance. Like I said, I don't have like the most extensive market knowledge. I don't really um, work towards learning the market too much because I don't care because I spent so much money on FIFA points. Um, I don't invest too much. I don't trade too much. And uh, you probably have found one or two things wrong with what I've said here, but I'm just going off the base of what I've read, what I've heard and what I've seen from investors and forums and threads on how the market trends should work based on last year. Of course, there's no guarantee of how they'll work. We can't predict the future. We can't predict player prices. Um, but I think in general, this week from today, Saturday, going through to next Saturday, Sunday, Monday, player prices are just gonna be on a slow and steady decline apart from those that people are investing in that are predicted to get upgrades. Um, so those players that could potentially get inform upgrades, those player prices are gonna be on the rise because if they get a January upgrade, of course, their value is gonna increase. Um, with that in mind, build your cheap team, sell everything that you've got. And when I say everything, I mean everything. Um, I, I mean like check your consumables, You'll see I've got no players. I've got a few staff, but not too many staff. I've got rid of all my staff. I've got no club items. I've got rid of all my kits, all my balls, all my badges. And you can actually make a few thousand coins as well if you go into the uh, EASFC catalog. Get all those kit bundles, ball bundles, etc. Just discard them. They don't discard for much, but you'll make one, two, three thousand coins depending on what level you're at. Uh, e easy coins, literally an easy three, four thousand coins that you can get out of that. Consumables is the biggest problem for most people. I stack consumables. You can see here I've got hundreds and thousands thousands of consumables, mainly contracts. I've got almost 10, 12,000 contracts. Um, it's ridiculous, really. There's 4,000 of those contracts there. Let me show you all of my contracts. Now, these contracts don't all go for everything. Um, the, the, the rare contracts here go for 250 if you let them go out for the hour, 200 if you don't, and the regular contract will sell for 150 to 200 if you let it go out for the hour. As you can see, I've got a lot of contracts. Uh, 4,000 there, 4,000 there, another one to 2,000 between the other uh, silvers and bronzes and stuff. And um, it, it's it's a lot of contracts. It's a lot of coins there, there's almost a million coins worth of contracts that I've got Even if you've got a hundred contracts at 200 coins That's going to be some coins that you can put towards buying a player That's going to be a low price because you want to invest in them or potentially putting towards packs or putting towards a blue player uh, fitness cards the same as you can see I have uh, of the squad fitness cards alone, almost three million coins worth of squad fitness cards, which I just can't be bothered to sell. Um, but if you, I, I hope you guys haven't got that many squad fitness cards. If you've got 100, 150, 200, sell them. Get your coins worth for them. Get the coins out of the game and make sure that you've got your coin total in the top left at the maximum when those blue cards come out because that's going to be what's important for you guys that want to get team of the year. Uh, last but last not least, um, I heard a rumor, I don't know if it's true, if anyone can confirm in the comments section below, I heard a rumor that there is now no limit to the amount of Ultimate Team accounts you can make. With that in mind, if, if this needs to be confirmed or denied first of all, you used to be able to make 10 accounts and then you couldn't make any more of Ultimate Team. People made the extra accounts to get the free draft token to do the draft to get the packs. If the rumor is true that you don't need, that you can't have, that you can have more than 10 accounts now, Go ahead and keep making those accounts, spam the foot draft, get the most you can out of all those free draft tokens that you can get, trade all the coins over to your main account, and you've got one week basically to like stack your club with all those free coins from those free draft tokens. It's a really simple method, you just create a brand new account, a brand new email, you go into Ultimate Team for the first time ever, you play the foot draft, always online, never offline, you play the foot draft, even if you go out in the first round, whatever you get in those five, the, you know, the two, three, five K packs that you're going to get and the loan pack, you're still going to generate five, six thousand coins. Move that over to your main account. Go and do it again. If you're good enough to win it, you're going to generate 50 Ks, 100 Ks, 35 K packs. Sell all the contents. You could be moving 20, 30, 40,000 coins over an hour. If you can do 10 accounts a day, for 10, 12, 14 hours a day, you could genuinely potentially make three or 400,000 coins a day depending on your level of ability within the game and then your luck within the packs. But the opportunity to spam the foot draft with the free draft tokens is apparently there. I don't know how true it is. I haven't tested it myself because I've never made 10 accounts before. But for those of you that have made 10 accounts, if you can confirm or deny that you can now make 11, 12, 20, 50 and 100 accounts, that would be great to know. Never do the foot draft offline, guys. The prizes just are not worth it ever. Losing in the first round of the foot draft online is as good as winning the foot draft offline. It, it really is. Um, there's also something to be said for abusing gameplay. Uh, if you're not good enough to win really online, go offline, guys. There, there's a lot of stuff you can do offline that gives you good rewards. Uh, the tournaments here, for example, this professional tournament for 4,000 coins, 
Max player quality is bronze. Minimum number of players from Red Bulls and New York City FC, two in each one. You can go and buy those for pretty cheap. Professional difficulty is easy to beat. It, it's the level that I can beat and I can't beat offline. I'm terrible offline. F for a 4,000 coin reward for four games for one hour of your time, that's a decent reward plus the match bonuses you're going to get. So you're going to get about five, 6,000 coins a time. If you did that four or five times in a day, you're going to get 30, 40,000 coins. It's a, good, it's a good way to generate coins. The rest of the tournaments aren't really worth it. As you can see, their prizes are only 500 to 1,000 coins. It's not worth it. Definitely try the featured cups. There seems to be a featured cup every day, every other day for a few days. You can get 4,000 coins out of this. That's brilliant. And if, if you're also good enough to play on offline, go to the single player seasons and uh, you find you get some pretty good rewards for the seasons. Um, they're all pretty easy in the early leagues as well, the early divisions. Beginner, amateur, beginner, amateur. Championship is 1,100 coins. The next division, obviously, a bigger promotion, bigger promotion. If you don't care about your record, you can promote and relegate yourself loads. Just generate those coins. Generate those coins. If you do care about your record, you can just play up to the level that you're good at. Get those free coins for you know going through the leagues. It's really quick. It's really simple, and it's a very good, effective way to make yourself a nice amount of coins. It's not you know you're not going to be making hundreds of thousands of coins through this method. You're going to be making 10 to 20, maybe 30 or 40 thousand coins a day. But it's a good way to invest your time in coins if you can't trade, if you don't know how to trade, and if you can't afford FIFA points. Um, last but not least. Um, I, I just want to uh, kind of end again with, I, I don't have the most extensive knowledge of the market. Um, what I do have is uh, knowledge of reading what people do, knowing knowing how this game works. And, and people panic in this game. When somebody like myself makes a video or when somebody like Bateson makes a video or AA9Skills makes a video about sell your players, th people go crazy. People start disliking the video because, oh, you're an idiot, you're wrong, you're this, you're that, you have no idea. People start liking the video and, and believing what you say is absolute gospel. What I'm saying is not gospel. It's my theories on how the market is going to react to the team of the year in a week's time. It's my thoughts on what you should do to best prepare your club. And um, if you want, like specific investment and trading ideas that's not what i'm here for because i i i don't know i bought up a whole bunch of mares for eighty thousand coins he's now going actually let me have a look how much he is going for he's I, last time i checked he was going for like a hundred and twenty thousand and i sold all of my mares because uh he was going for so much that i just cashed in i bought about 10 of them i made about three four five hundred thousand coins or so on uh riyad mares and uh, i was very happy with my my profits because it was easy. I literally did it because I, I saw I saw the trend over a few days was going up, um, and I just thought, yeah, let me invest in this and, and see what he's going at. So now we look at his price, and he's going for he's uh, he's about 115, 120. So still he's, he's you know he's still in that kind of 120 range. There's not too many of him on the market. Maybe you can pick up a couple for 115, uh, 110, maybe. But in general, like his price is is. Uh, pretty pretty high right now and I invested a lot in him um, and then I sold him off at a, prior, at a time where I got the maximum potential out of him it, it's a dangerous game investing and trading because for every winner there's a loser because of the way the market works um, I, as I say I, I don't know the most about it but what I can tell you is through this week the market trends are going to go down this is where you either want to be selling your players quick as possible to get the most out of them or buying the players you want for your team because they're going to be at the lowest price. If you think day one of team of the year is going to be when the prices are the lowest, you will be incorrect. According to you know the, the people that know what they're talking about. Because people have already pre-prepared for team of the year before team of the year comes out. Now the only benefit about team of the year actually coming out is people are going to spam a load of packs. Which means you're going to have a huge period of time where... So many packs are getting opened, all these players are going to start getting dropped. You know, let's say you pack a Vincent Company. You don't care about Vincent Company, there's blue cards in there. You want to sell them as quick as possible so you put them at bottom price, maybe less 10% to try and get that insta sale. There'll be some really good sniping opportunities during the week of the blue cards. But in terms of investing or buying at the lowest point, it's going to be the next week that you guys want it for. Um, hopefully this video does help you. Let me know if it does help you. Let me know if you just think I'm flat out wrong uh, in the comment section. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on how the market trends are going to go over the next week, week and a half. Be great to hear your guys' inputs and, and thoughts. But this is going to be the end of the video. So thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And I'll see you next time. I'm out. Peace.